Praise him. Praise him. Praise him, you Jesus. Come on, we don't need no music. We got music in the inside. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, just open your mouth and just give God a worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your love, Jesus. Thank you for your power, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for loving us, Jesus. Thank you for your goodness and your mercy, Jesus. Thank you for your word, Jesus. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity on Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Just for being able to walk to talk, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. For your mercy, Lord, your goodness, Jesus. Your glory, your glory, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For breath, Jesus. Jesus. For your mind regulator, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For your love, your love, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. Lord, we thank you all tonight. Lord. For our keeper, you are, Lord Jesus. Lord, we appreciate you. Thank you, Jesus. No thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We're for the grateful to you, Lord. Lord. We're grateful Just to, to you, Jesus. Of God, Lord, so Lord, grateful Lord, to you, Lord, Lord Jesus. 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 But they're not able to be in the house, Lord. We thank you, Lord, Jesus. for saving Jesus. our souls, Lord, and making us holy. Jesus. Jesus. Lord, we appreciate you, Jesus. 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 Lord, we thank you, Lord, on tonight, Lord. Thank you, thank you, Jesus. We magnify your holy name Jesus. on tonight, Jesus. Lord, there's nobody greater than you. Come on, put those hands together. Thank you, Jesus. Put Jesus all over the building. Come on, just run to the other side of the room and give somebody a holy go forward. Come on, welcome into the house of God. Thank you. God bless, God bless you. you. Love you. I love you too, sister. Yes, oh, oh, excuse me. Hey, how you doing, brother? Good to see you. Good to see you, baby. How you doing? God, God love you too. Bless you. Bless you. Yes, Jesus. Uh-uh. Lord, we thank you on tonight, Lord. Magnify your own tonight, Jesus. I get Glory to you, Lord. Lord, we thank you on tonight, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank God on tonight. Somebody need to feel that Lord on tonight. Somebody need to know somebody care for him on tonight. Yes, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you on tonight, Jesus. Hey, I'm glad that you came. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, put those hands together for Jesus one more time. Hallelujah. How many excited to be in the house of God on tonight? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said, I've been excited Hallelujah. to be in the house of God on tonight. Hallelujah. I know I am. I thank God for this opportunity. I thank God for our Lord and Savior. Come on, listen. Come on, stand to your feet. Let's give honor what honor is due. To our Lord and Savior. Come on, give it up for Jesus. Christ. Come on, give it up for Jesus on tonight. Hallelujah. We thank God for Jesus. Thank God for our pastor and overseer. The apostle there, Glenn McCoy. Come on, give it up for your overseer. Pastor there, Glenn McCoy. We thank God for yes. your late lady. Mr. Dorothy McCoy. Yes. Thank God for them. Thank God for this great man of God, Apostle Warden. Amen. 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 This opportunity to come and put your hands together for him. Yes. We love your late lady. Amen. Amen. Being with us on tonight. Yes. Thank Amen. Thank God for all these great hosts of elders that came to join us on tonight. Yes. Amen. Thank God for him. Amen. Amen. Thank God Amen. for each and every one of you on tonight. Amen. Thank Amen. Thank God for you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Put your hands together one more time for yourself. Amen. Because you could have been anywhere else. You can have your seat. Hallelujah. In the house of God. Yes, Jesus. But I believe God got a word with your name on it tonight. Yes, yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I believe God got a word Thank you, Jesus. with your name on it. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank God on tonight. Thank God for my wife yes. and my kids in that absence. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God for them. Thank you, Lord. Thank Jesus. God for Thank you, Jesus. each and every one of you. Mm-hmm. We're in the hour today yeah. where everybody ain't going to make it. That's true. That's true. God showed me something the other week 
And I got a little short word I'm going to minister to you. I won't be before you long. But I believe God want to show you something on tonight. We can, we can, we can have, I was, I was wrestling in the, you know how the, the, the enemy will fool with your mind. He'll try to get you to preach one message when you know you're supposed to preach another message. Amen. He'll have you want to come just, just get totally out of the will of God and just preach something that God don't want you to preach, but. You have to stick with the mandate. Hallelujah. That's what I learned. Glory to Jesus. But I, I, I want to read this to you. God gave me this the other week because I was going through a trial and things was happening and, and all kind of situations was going on. And God spoke to me when he sat me down in my prayer chair. I was praying. I said, Lord, something got to happen. He said, son, you know what I'm going to do for you? He said, I'm going to put you on spiritual probation. So I said, what, what you mean by spiritual probation? And he told me, I've been reading it in Gulfport, Slidell, because it's going to help you. He gave it to me on this little pad while he was speaking to me. I was writing it down. If anybody been on probation before, then you'll understand. But if you haven't been on probation, you'll still understand what I'm about to read to you. God said, I'm going to put you on probation. This ain't what I'm going to minister on, but this is going to bless you. He said, that means as long as you obey the laws, first of all, that means obey his word. The word of God is a lamp unto my feet, light to my path. The Bible says the entrance of the word give it light. The Bible says the commandments is a lamp and the law is a light. So in, in, in probation, you got somebody, you got the, the, the law, you got the law giver. The one that, that you have to obey to report into every week or every month that you have to go to. So you have you have to report in to the law. Listen to the lawgiver. You have to obey what the words say. First natural, then spiritual. A lot of us, a lot of us, we do what we want to do. We obey what we want to obey. We take parts of the word out and obey this part and say this part ain't, ain't for this seed and this part but ain't for this and this for ain't for that. Go to your classes, which is church. A lot of us, we only come to church like one time a week. One time a week, that's the only time we show up. In probation, you have to you have to report in the classes when they tell you you have to report in or they'll violate you. Jesus. See, but we don't understand God will violate us if we don't we have to be in the presence of God. When the presence of God is before this mm -hmm. joy. And the presence of God just ain't everywhere. God is everywhere. His presence just ain't going to be everywhere. So we run here, here, there, there. We run everywhere. But he spoke to me. He said, son, he said, you have to be in class, meaning be in church when you're supposed to, like roll call. Yeah. And pass every drug test. Now, a lot of us won't pass this. <laughs> pass every drug test. When, when, when probation officer, they're going to give you a drug test to make sure you clean. God says spiritually making sure the inside, no hidden iniquity yeah. is inside of you. A Jesus. lot of us think we just clean because we've been in church for a long time. Mm. Not knowing that it's stuff that can be inside of you that's, that's all right. the way down inside of you. Yeah. And you just adapt it like it's a part of your yeah. personality. Yeah. And, 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 and probation, because I've been on probation a couple of times. <laughs> okay. And on, and, and, and on probation, if you don't pass the drug test, then that can violate you. Okay. That's, right. That's true. Staying clean, you get to stay free from demons. But if not, you have to go back to prison. That means staying free from all. If, if, if you violate and you ain't, if, if you don't stay clean, that means all them demons that was back, that was on you have to come up on you and seven more demons. That means you have to go back to prison. You violate probation, they'll give you a chance. They might talk to you, tell you, look here, don't do it no more. Then second time, okay, that, that's strike two, don't do it again. Mm -hmm. But if you violate, then you have to go back to prison, meaning every demon that once came off you got to come back on you again. Mm -hmm. I told God when he showed me this, I said, Lord, keep me on. Yes. Probation, I, I mean, forever. 
Because I need to be on probation. I need you to check me. I need to be in class. I need to report in all the time. Yes, Jesus. A lot of us don't report in because we don't think we have to. Jesus. Man, this is the this is the safety ground. This is the safety place right now. But a lot of us don't understand that God spoke to me. He 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 speaks to me. He says, "The son is time to prophesy." Yes. And I prophesied to him Sunday in Gulfport. God showed me. He said, it's getting ready to be unexpected bombs that's going to drop in Washington, D.C. He spoke it to me. He said, going to be unexpected bombs that's getting ready to drop. But people don't believe that. I'm running with everything that I got. I had a vision. I was telling somebody, I think it was my mama, about a week, two weeks ago. In my prayer room, I had a vision. I seen like, I mean, just like smoke. And I, I seen like chaos, everything, just like all at one time. Smoke going everywhere, planes and bombs here, this, that. And I came out the vision. I told, I called my mom and I told us I had a, a vision that it was like war. But I mean, you don't have to be a genius to know that something is getting ready to happen. You don't have to be a, 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 a you can be blind and know what's going to get ready to come. You hear people talking. <laughs> but them old saints back in the day, because I grew up in the Church of God in Christ back in the day, man, them folks used to be in church. They had power. They had anointing. They had good man. I seen demons being cast out. That stuff going to get ready to take place again. Not only was it happening in that church, it was happening more than that. Them church, the people was sold out. People was, right. was living for God. They, they didn't have a a spirit of hypocrisy. Yes. They was going, they were sold out. Many of us, we just do it. We just come to church when we want to come to church. Oh, do, what we, yeah. do what we want to do. And it's, 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 in this hour, I understand that you have to have holy boldness. Mm -hmm. Because, see, on the outside, you can be as white as the puppets, but on the inside, you can be as dead man bones. Yes, I done learned now, it don't matter what you look like on the outside, it's what the inside is. Yes, yes, yes. You can look, boy, you can have a dress on from here all the way to that back door. I done learned now. God just showing me for the years. I, 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 I didn't just only just, I can't, I, God saved me and turned me to a preacher uh -huh. when I came to Trump, but that, that's what he did. I didn't know nothing about like everything I know now. But I always grew up in like church sin church stuff, and I grew up seeing hypocrites. Mm -hmm. I grew up seeing people that, that live one way in the church, then when they step out the church, then they're another way. Uh -huh. So I never was able to see that same thing, like, okay, you go to church, you don't talk like, you talk different when you come to church, act different when you come, then when you leave church, then it's a whole nother spirit that come up on you. You, don't, you ain't holy no more, you don't dress the same, you don't act the same, you don't talk to your family members, it's, it's a totally different, you backbiting, gossiping, and then, uh, you ain't speaking in tongue at home, but then when you get to church, you're speaking in these tongues, I'm like, what is going on? This just ain't, something ain't right about it, so it made me grow up and say, man, I ain't never finna do this. Man, I, man, I hate that. It made me start hating church because I seen hypocrites. Mm -hmm. So just imagine when you don't live the same way you, that you live in church, and, you, and people see you, then when you stay, you make them hate you. Jesus, right. Jesus, right. Jesus. Because they want to see real. That's All right. I wanted to see was somebody that was being real. Yes. Oh, yes. All I, I mean, being, being, yeah. being from, from. I'm giving a testimony. I'm getting ready to minister in a minute. Mm -hmm. But I was, I was. I was addicted to cocaine from the age of 14 years old. I went to snort heroin. I went popping over 100 pills a week. I mean, I was everything. Went to trying to smoke off the fall, and, and I mean, just mm -hmm. messed all the way up. Every, everything you can name, I was doing. Thank God. But never understood that it was demons. That was driving me. I know I used to, I, I could sit in, sit in my house and I see stuff just running. Ooh, mm -hmm. Spirits just, I mean, stuff just going, just going crazy. And I used to get on the phone and I used to call preachers. Mm -hmm. And I used to call them and, 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 and call them and reaching out for help. Mm -hmm. And they would never pick up the phone. 
and, 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 and leave voice messages and, and going through in my mind. And one thing I told, I was telling somebody the other day, I said, one thing I made up in my mind, I said, I never do, never, ever, ever, is when somebody needs me, I don't care if it's 2, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning, I'm going to get up, pray with you. I'm going to get no matter what I got to do with you because I want you to know that I'm going to be there for you. I want you to see somebody real that ain't in one day then out the next. Hallelujah. Come on, turn your Bible to Psalms chapter 66. Psalm 66. See, we have to be real kept because in this hour, we have to search, 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 search. We have to check, 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 check. Because yes. if we don't, then we'll miss it. Yes, I'm getting ready to show you something real quick. If you have it, say amen. amen. Psalm 66 and verse 18. Amen. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not hear me. But verily God had heard me. He had attended to the voice of my prayer. Hallelujah. Blessed be the God which had not turned away my prayer, nor his mercy Hallelujah. from me. I got a couple of scriptures, but they ain't long scriptures. Ezekiel 28 and 15. Because it's time to walk in the realm with God with all, I mean, we got to block out everything right now. Things is getting ready to take place. See, God said, I'm going to do a quick word. I'm going to cut it short and right. Some people, he ain't got time enough to so just let them stay in. That's why he sent them through all the trials while they was younger. He had he had me in church listening, seeing stuff when I was younger, not knowing that he was going to turn me into a preacher right now. Okay. So he did a quick work, cut it short and righteous. But some people can't 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 get a blessing because they'll look at somebody like they ain't got mm -hmm. no wisdom. Right. Mm -hmm. But God will give you God will give you wisdom, mm -hmm. like. Like 88 year old man. Yes, it was it was a guy named Sonny Abney. And this was I'm, I mean the biggest dope house in the town, in the city. And it was just right across the street from my house. So you know we shoot dice, hustling, selling dope, doing doing everything. But this man right here, he was in the world but I was a young little boy, but I always used to go over there. Everybody else used to be over there, and they'd leave. they talk crazy, but when they leave, I'd be like, Sonny, give me some wisdom. Talk to me. Tell me about, tell me about when you was, when you was uh, younger. Tell me about when you grew up. Tell me about this. And he used to sit me down, and just he'd tell me his old story. So I always been around, like, old people. I ain't just, never just, just, it's like I was, Old people was attracted to me. I was like attracted to <laughs> yes. old people. That's good. But you can learn some some stuff from, from some people you think ain't got no wisdom. Amen. 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 Thou was perfect, Ezekiel 28, 15. Thou was perfect in the in that ways from the day that thou was created. Till iniquity was found in thee. God showed me that the other the other week. I didn't read the scriptures a whole lot of time, but he showed it. He showed me the scripture, and he showed me in a way that I'd never seen it. He said, till iniquity was found, and if something found somewhere, then somebody looking for something. When you go to school and you lose your jacket, you have to go get it out the lost and what? Found. Yeah. That means he's God looking for something. Yeah. He's looking for something. Yeah. He's looking. The Bible said, the eyes of the Lord run to and fro, seeking to prove himself mighty. God is looking because he's looking for a pure seed. Mm -hmm. So he's looking. He was looking for iniquity when iniquity was found. Hallelujah. In the Hallelujah. Tell you, it was quickly Psalms 51. Hallelujah. It was found in him. Hallelujah. I mean, God is looking for something because you yes. can think you got something in you, yes. but it can, you can think ain't nothing in you, but it can be in you. Yes. 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 yes, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalms 51, verse 2. Watch me thoroughly. From my iniquity. You're always talking about mine. I, my iniquity. And cleanse me from my sin. Flip over to the ninth verse. Hide that face from my sins. And block out all my iniquities. Creating me a clean heart. 
O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Ezekiel 16 and 49. Let's run through this real quick. Ezekiel 16 and 49. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus, Jesus. Behold, this was the iniquity of thy sister Solomon. Pride, fullness of bread, and abundance of idleness was in her. And in her daughters, neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and needy. Isaiah 59 and 2. Then two more scriptures after that. 59 and 2. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God. And your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. Matthew 7. No, let's go to Titus 2 and 14 first. Titus 2 and 14. We were shaping in iniquity and in sin that our mothers conceive us. Shaping is like form. We was, we was created in iniquity. Amen. That's it. That's it. Mm -hmm. Iniquity, I looked that word up. It said fashion in or provided with a definite shape. Mm -hmm. We were shaping in iniquity. This body ain't nothing but iniquity. Amen. That's why I said ain't no good thing that dwells in you in your flesh that is. That's right. We got to get the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I believe in the Holy Ghost. Could nothing keep me but the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I got fornicating, committing adultery, shoot out, big 357 magnums to my head, the bullets wouldn't even come out the gun. Jesus. I mean, all type of Jesus. stuff over Jesus. In, in the truck, six, seven times, ran through light pole, Jesus. being shot at, all kind of stuff, and I ain't just up here just saying Jesus. it. Just to, this really happened in my life. Jesus. All kind of situations. Then, then one day, God just come and riding up the... I'm going to get to it in a minute. Go ahead. Yeah. Take your time. Jesus. Jesus. Titus 2 and 4. Jesus. 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 That they may teach... 2 and 14, I'm sorry. 2 and 14. Who gave himself for us. for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify us, purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works, these things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. Hallelujah. Last and final scripture, Matthew 7 and 21. Matthew 7 and 21. Matthew 7 and 21. Matthew 7 and 21. Now everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, Lord, I come before you on tonight, Lord, Jesus. asking you to forgive me for every sin, known or unknown, seen or unseen. Lord, I ask that you let such an anointing rest up in this place, Lord. Lord, my flesh didn't want me to preach this message on tonight. Lord, I know it was a fight, Lord, so I know you want me to minister on tonight. Lord, let the people see you and not me, Lord, on tonight. Lord, let the people see you, Lord. I am nothing. Lord, I ask that you take away pride. Take away Every Jesus. hidden iniquity, take Lord, away, that can be in me, Lord. I ask that you search me on tonight. Let such a glory rest in this place. Lord, I don't know what to say or what to do. I ask that you use this vessel of clay on tonight. In Son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, put those hands together one more time for Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God gave me this 
word in that. It's, it's, a, it's a simple word. But he gave me this through a trial about two or three weeks ago. So I woke up this morning and all kind of stuff was going on. All kind of situations, all kind of things. So I was asking God, I said, Lord, what, what do you want me to minister? Yeah. He said, son, when I was in a hotel room, yeah. he said, on iniquity. Yes. He said, because a lot of people think they got it right, but they don't have it right. He said, you have to understand that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Yes. The same was in the beginning with God. Amen. So he took me down through this Word the other day. He said, son, we got to get the Word. But a couple of weeks ago, See, now you're going to have to listen to what I'm getting ready to preach unto you. Mm -hmm. You can be sitting in the pulpit. You can be sitting in the, in the audience. You can be on a praise team. You can be, it don't matter what you are. You can be sitting right there with iniquity in your heart. Yes, Jesus. I was going through some trials and tribulations. The, the, the other week, I always go through trials and stuff, but this seemed like, it was just like, I mean, like, boy, this, this one was one of them trials you got to go through. And you just got the man up on talking about the devil trying to stop your prayer life. He's trying to stop your consecration. But you're pushing yourself in prayer, doing what you got to do. Because if you're a real soldier, then ain't nothing going to stop you anyway. So I'm going and I'm going. I'm steady going in prayer. But I'm coming out of prayer. I mean, watch this. I'm going in prayer and I'm praying. I'm crying. I'm doing all this. I'm coming out with tears running down my eyes. And, and I'm praying, asking God, Lord, please help me. Lord, please help me. Help my kids, my wife. I'm praying for all type of people not understanding as soon as I come out of the room, I'm going to show you how subtle the enemy is. I believe it is Genesis, the, uh, the third chapter, the first verse. It say how the serpent was most subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord thy God had made. He made them just for this moment right now. He make him to show you what's inside of you. See, you will never know what's inside of you unless the enemy show you. He said you through a trial. See you through trials and tribulation. See you through heartache and pain. And he want to show you because he wants you to cry out to be able to get this thing, this iniquity that's in your heart that you don't believe is in there. That you don't know that's in there. That you use now as your personality. But I was going through a trial and all of a sudden I'm crying. I'm asking God, Lord, what is it? Lord, what are you doing? All of a sudden I've come out my prayer room. But I'm still angry. But I I think that it's me. I'm still upset with my wife. I'm still upset with my kids. I'm talking about I come up out the room and I'm fussing but not knowing I got a demon down in the inside of me. You're going to have to listen to what I'm getting ready to preach because Christians think because they've been sitting in a house 20 and 30 years that ain't nothing inside of them that they pure. So you got to search yourself daily. He said take heed to your own self. I believe it was Paul that said who shall deliver me from this body of death. You have to understand there ain't no good thing that dwell in you in your flesh that is. So I'm asking God. I'm going on. I'm talking about I'm in the poor pit. I'm preaching. I'm laying hands. I'm prophesying. I'm talking about all the other states and people getting up that ain't walked in years and ain't running and getting healed and getting delivered. I'm getting calls from everywhere but all of a sudden I'm talking about this thing this iniquity is inside of me but God was sending me through this trial he sent me through a couple weeks ago for me to understand. I came up out of prayer. Now I'm talking about watch this. I'm still mad. I'm still angry not knowing that uh -uh, this ain't the spirit of Christ. This ain't the spirit of Christ. God, he didn't show me right then, but I'm asking God because I'm saying, Lord, my prayers seem like they ain't getting the answer. I'm saying, Lord, what's going on? My house is going crazy. My kids, it seem like they're going crazy. All type of situations are going crazy. Not knowing that the Bible says if you regard iniquity in your heart your prayers will not be heard not knowing that God won't hear me not knowing that you if you are at, at odds with your husband if you are at odds with your wife then your prayers won't be heard because y'all are one y'all are one flesh not knowing
God, I'm asking God, I'm like, Lord, everything is going on, but, but my prayers are not being heard. I'm talking about the thing was getting so bad that I'm on one side of the bed and she on the other, not knowing that it's, it's nothing but a demon that's inside of my bed. It's iniquity because if I got the Holy Ghost, then it don't matter what nobody else is doing. I'm going to still have peace in the midst of the storm. I'm going to still have joy when everything is going crazy. I'm going to still be able to step on the sea and say, peace be still, but not understand this thing is inside of me. It's getting ready to take my soul to hell, not even knowing that this thing is in me. I'm going on day by day. But God sent me through a trial. I'm talking about going through. I'm talking about seeing like everybody disobedient. This happening. That happening. This happening. Everything. I'm talking about anger, frustration, stuff that I thought was out of me that's coming back up. So you're looking at the trial. And you're looking at the enemy hitting you. See, uh, don't let no man say when he is tempted that he's tempted of God. No, you drawn away by your own. That's because of, I'm talking about your evil desires come from within. It's no good thing that dwell in you in your flesh that is. So God trying to tell you, you got to get more of the Holy Ghost. See, if you still getting angry for no reason, then that means you got to get more Holy Ghost. I'm talking about if you still disrespecting people and talking crazy. You talking about, I just got to give them a piece of my mind. Then you got to get more Holy Ghost. I'm talking about, I'm sitting, I'm riding down the road. I'm going crazy because people ain't driving fast enough. No, I'm supposed to have patience and long suffering. What happened to the patient? What happened to the fruit of the spirit? You know what? The enemy was creeping in my life and I couldn't even see it. See, he creeping in the preacher's life. He preaching in the prophet's life. He creeping in everybody's life right now because he most subtle than any beast of the field. He don't care if you've been in church 50 years. All he want to do is put something in you because uh -uh, in that day if he finds something in you then wherever God sent him to in that last day that's where he going to take you to because he's living inside of you. See, you wonder why things is going on and God is not hearing your prayers after tonight. If you don't remember nothing, you going to remember, remember the word iniquity because you're going to search yourself and ask God, Lord, whatever it is, why I'm so angry at my kids every time I look at them? Why I'm so angry at my wife when they turn around, I'm licking them in the back of the head, ready to knock their head off? No, you're supposed to have love. You're supposed to have long suffering peace joy. Uh -uh. But I wasn't having none of this. But you know who I was looking at? I was looking at everybody else. I wasn't looking at myself. He said, son, take heed to your own self. You got to look at your own self. What you looking at everybody else for? Uh -uh. You got to check yourself. Because in that day, ain't nobody going to stand before me but you. I'm not going to go asking nobody what they did, what they did. I'm going to judge you for what you did. And in that day, you know what it all come down to? He gonna say, uh uh, here it go. He gonna he gonna come down to this right here. He gonna say, well done, that good and faithful servant. Or he gonna say, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. Why at the end he gonna say, you worker of iniquity? Because that's what he looking for. I read you the scripture in the beginning when iniquity was found in Satan. See, when you got iniquity in your heart, you automatically become Satan because Satan is the original of iniquity. See, you don't understand. You stand mad and angry. You get, you upset. You mad at somebody at the church. You mad at somebody on your job. And now you got that little thing that be jiggling in the inside of you. And you thinking you set free. No. You got to get on your knees and cry out to God. No matter what it is, you got to go ask for forgiveness. Because if you can't forgive your brother or sister, uh -uh, then your father in heaven, he won't forgive you. If your brother got an oath against you, then you need to go ask your brother for forgiveness. But don't nobody want to ask nobody for forgiveness because everybody full of pride. Everybody full of proudness. Uh-uh. But he resists the proud. But he gives grace to the humble. After today, somebody getting back up. I'm talking about it don't matter what they've been going through, what the trial, what the tribulation is. You know what God trying to get it out of us for? Because he getting ready to pull the fullness in us. He just can't pull the fullness in us with something in us. Uh-uh. You can't have Satan in you. Sweet and bitter water can't proceed out of the same fountain. Two can't walk together except they agree. But on tonight, God getting ready to send a word that's going to lose you. 
I was going through all of a sudden. All of a sudden, I thank Tosca McCoy. I feel this word on tonight. I don't care if you going through heartache. I don't care if you going through pain. I don't care if you been depressed. I don't care if you going through sickness. I don't care if you going through pain. I don't care what it is on tonight. God getting ready to heal you. He sent his word to heal. I believe in his word. I believe in his word. I trust in his word. I trust in him with all my heart. And I lean down into my own understanding. And all that ways acknowledge me. And I shall direct your path. So I'm going on. I believe he came from a, a mobile or one of them cities we went to a, a couple weeks ago. And I'm talking about, I, I know someone going right. I wasn't feeling right no more. I'm like, Lord, I was able to pray. I'm like, it's like I'm losing my prayer life. It seems like I'm losing my consecration. I get in prayer and I just get so sleepy all of a sudden. I just want to fall asleep. And then all of a sudden he came back from Mobile. And on a Saturday he went to teaching on prayer. He said, uh, he said, you know what it is? He said, Trump and Zion is dying. Jesus. He said, Trump and Zion is dying. So he went through the message on that day. I'm like, what is going on? What are you talking about? Trump and Zion is dying. I said, man, I feel so much life in here. I'm still set free. I'm still delivered. I'm still preaching. I'm still, God is blessing me. My body healed all of this. But not understanding that we was dying from the inside out. I'm talking about dying from the inside out. How many of us even get to prayer at 7 o'clock anymore and pray for the hour? How many of Waking up in the morning and giving God time. I'm talking about how many are fasting, how many of us got a dedication and a consecration anymore. And I'm asking God. I'm like, oh, I see what he's talking about. And he put a scripture up on the board. He said, if you regard iniquity in your heart, your prayers will not get heard. I didn't heard and I didn't seen that scripture so many times, but not understood I never understood. I never seen it like that. But the only reason and it made me see it like that because I was going through a trial and the trial was producing for this thing to come up out of me. See, you going through the trials and this thing is producing more glory in you. It's producing. See, you got to understand. The Bible says tribulation, work it, patience. Patience, experience, experience, hope. Hope making that a shame because the love of God is shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Ghost. The tribulation is bringing forth more Holy Ghost. The trials is bringing up the stuff that's all the way down in you. I'm talking about the heat is bringing up the gold to the top. See, you ain't nothing but a diamond in the rough. And God digging down in the dirt to get ready to pull you out. And when he pulling you out, it might be roots, it might be stuff that he got to pull out with it. But when you come up, you coming up as pure gold. I'm talking about you coming up as a shining diamond. Oh, tonight somebody getting ready to get their joy back. Somebody getting ready to get their peace back. It don't matter what nobody do, what nobody say on tonight. You get ready to make phone calls. You get ready to go back to the church and tell God. Lord, you get ready to climb on the altar and tell them confession is made unto salvation. If you confess you want to another, then be faithful and just to forgive you for your sins. So you got to understand what I'm getting ready to preach. So the next day we went to slide L because he didn't really hit me all the way that day. He put the scripture up on the board again that day. And all of a sudden now light came on the entrance of the word. Give it light. The word of God is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my path. The commandment is a lamp and the law is a light. You got to understand that light come to show the darkness. Now I'm getting to understand that when you're going through the trials it don't matter what you're going through God. If you're a real child of God God going to see you do something that's going to produce a greater glory. That's going to produce a greater anointing. Look at the trials that you're going through right now producing a greater anointing it's producing a greater glory it's producing a greater healing ministry it's producing a greater prospect of a, a prophesied ministry you can be able to see a greater discernment because you've been through that uh -uh. but after that day I left up by the side there when he put that scripture up on the board I went to making phone calls I called my wife I was calling people I said oh, God show me I said I never let iniquity be found in my heart again you got to understand that the Bible says Jesus said I seen Satan being cast out of heaven like lightning. You know why he would cast out? Because God found iniquity in his heart. I'm talking about as soon as God find iniquity in your heart, then you get cast out the kingdom. But watch this here. 
on, you just don't get cast out where you know you cast out. Look what he casted him to. He casted him to a place that was beautiful as heaven was. He cast him down to Eden. God will put you in a state of delusion where you will be in such a beautiful place where you will think ain't nothing wrong. But you got to understand God is trying to fortify us. God is trying to get something out of us. God is trying to raise us up in this last hour. Many of us, we got ministry that God getting ready to send to the nation. He can't use us. He can't pour that full anointing in us with something inside of us. After today, you better go to crying and asking God. I know I do every day. I tell God, keep me on spiritual probation because I don't care what nobody else going through. I don't care what I'm going through. It don't matter what I'm going through. Uh -uh. I'm not bagging up. I'm not giving up. It don't matter what. Uh -uh. You can't stop me because you know why? I got the Holy Ghost living inside of me. He said, you shall receive power. And after that, the Holy Ghost has come upon me. How many got the Holy Ghost? He give you the power to overcome the enemy. And then he give you the Holy Ghost to be able to speak to the Son. He give you that resurrection power. Somebody got the resurrection power living inside of them. I don't care about what the devil trying to do. I rebuke the devil in the name of Jesus. Oh, you, get, you better start telling the devil, get deep behind me. Satan, the Bible say, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, not standing in the way of sinners, not sitting in the seat of the scoffer, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in the law do he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. You got to get planted by the rivers of water. You know what the water do? It produces life. Somebody get ready to get life on tonight. I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel the power in this place. I don't care what the enemy try to hold back from you. Uh-oh, when well, you got that Holy Ghost power, when well, you got Jesus living in the inside of you, he said you shall receive power. And after that, the Holy Ghost, he gave you power to tread over serpent and over scorpion over all the power to enemy God. You got to understand Jesus, God manifested in the flesh. Jesus, he said, uh-uh, uh-uh, I got power to take my life up and I got power to lay it back down. The Bible say, uh-uh, he don't give you the spirit of fear, but a power, love, and of a sound man. You better get your power back. You better get your joy back because in the presence of God is a fullness of joy. How many got joy on tonight? God, get ready to take you to a whole nother level. All you got to do is hold out. All you got to do is wait on God. All you got to do is stay pure because that full anointing is getting ready to take place. That full anointing is getting ready to take place. That full anointing is getting ready to take place. See, you don't understand what God is doing. He's raising up some willing soldiers in this last hour. See, all you got to understand, God is getting ready to take us to a place like you ain't never seen. I'm not just sitting around. If they don't want to pray, I'm praying. If they don't want to wake up in the morning, I'm in my prayer room and I got to go up in there. You know why? Because I got too many demons that's connected to me like I told you before. At the age of 14 years old. I went to snorting cocaine. I'm talking about I got a little old. I went to snorting heroin. I went to popping so many pills that I had to go to the hospital and the doctors for I was so addicted. I was trying to smoke off the fall. I'm talking about I'm putting cocaine in my cigarettes. I'm talking about I'm doing all kind of stuff. But God never let me lose my mind. Look how you have been through so many trials. But God never let you lose your mind. He said many are called but few are chosen. I'm looking there's some chosen people up in here. The devil couldn't take you out when you was in the streets. He couldn't take you out when they said you had cancer. He couldn't take you out when they said you lost your mind. When they tried to admit you to the crazy house. They couldn't take you out. I'm talking about the people in the church that tried to run you out of there. They couldn't run you out. You know why? Because you chose it in this last hour. You better get yourself ready. Because God getting ready to pour a whole straight anointing out on you. It don't matter what you're going through. You better speak that word. Stay in that word. What is that word the Bible say? In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Now what is the word? God is a spirit. And those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The Bible say the spirit quickening. 
The flesh part of it nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. You got to understand that the Bible say in the beginning God. But God told me, he said, son, take it one step farther. In the beginning God created. So God created. He created every trial. He created every heartache. He created every pain. He created everything that you going through. Everything that you see right now, he created it. You know why? Because he want to take you to another level. He want to raise you up in this last hour. He want to take you to a place in him like you ain't never seen. I ain't worried about what nobody say. You know what I'm doing? I'm saying stay fast and don't move. I ain't let nobody move me because you know why? We in the last hour. We right here. We at the brink of a miracle. I'm talking about God getting ready to save our kids. God getting ready to save our wives. He getting ready to bring our mamas and our daddies in. If you can hold out, if you can wait up on him, he'll renew your strength like an eagle. See, you've been a little sick right now, but God getting ready to send his word and heal you. I'm talking about you've been a little weak in the mind, but you're going to be able to tell the enemy, let this mind be in me that was also in Christ Jesus. The enemy been hitting your finances, but you're going to tell him, I never seen no righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. I'm talking about the enemy been hitting your body, but you're going to tell that enemy, with his strife, I am healed. You're going to tell him, uh-uh, I can put my all you gonna tell them you ain't gonna put more upon me than I can bear. You know why? Because you chosen. You're a real child of God. I'm a real soldier. I ain't giving up. I ain't giving up. I ain't stopping. It don't matter what I go do. Somebody in this place with a shout, glory! I ain't giving up in the struggle. I ain't stopping, I ain't stopping, I ain't stopping. I go if I got to go by myself. You know why? Because God, uh-uh, he ordained me to be able to do this. If you here right now, don't you know it was ordained by God for you to be in this place right now? It's ordained by God for you to hear this word right now. You better go deep, deep down in the inside. You better tell God, yeah, I was molested as a kid. Lord, I ain't forgave that person person yet, but Lord, I want you to get this up out of me. It's rooted all in my kidneys, all in my organs. It's rooted all in my private parts. Lord, get this up out of me. So you got to understand, when I preach something, I done been through it. See, I was molested as a little child. I'm talking about seeing that little demon sliver through the room, and you so scared, you can't even say nothing. You don't even want to tell nobody, because there's so much fear in your heart. But when God saved me, he said, son, you got to forgive me. You know what happened? You know what happened? You know what happened? You know what happened? One day they came to a service I had. And you know what I had to do? That same person that it happened from? God let me lay hands on him and give him a miracle. You see what I'm saying? You got to understand. God is looking for himself. The Bible says God is love. God is love. Then the Bible says God is a spirit. Which one is you? What are you? Are you a spirit? You are love. You got to understand that God is a spirit and he is love. See, he's looking for himself. He is a love manifested in the flesh. Uh-uh. Ooh. You got to understand who God is. He gave his only begotten son. He gave his only begotten son. His son was nothing but pure love, pure peace, pure joy. So God, uh, he is a spirit. If you got the same spirit in you, you're going to have nothing but love in your heart. You gonna have nothing but love. You know how they gonna know you by the love that you show. So you can have everything that you. You can have that little giver. You can prophesy. You can do all that. But you know the number one key to this thing is your love. I got to be able to see your love. I got to be able to see your love. If I can't see your love, uh-uh, I wanna feel your love. I wanna feel it. You know how you can get next to somebody and you just say, "Ooh, that person. They were so loving. I can feel their spirit all the way from across the room." Can somebody? to feel your spirit or you still nasty and upset and mad at the past, mad at the ex-husband, you mad at the ex-wife, you mad at the ex-boyfriend that you was dating in high school, you better let that stuff go and ask God, Lord, I don't need nobody but you, I don't want nobody but you, the only thing I want inside of me is you, I don't want you to find iniquity in my heart, Lord, I don't want to be cast out of the 
kingdom. What did the kingdom of the Bible say? The kingdom of God don't come in meat and drink, but in righteousness. He said, joy in the Holy Ghost. He said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness and all these things shall be added until you see all. I ain't worried about the things. You know what I'm worried about? I want the kingdom. I want that Holy Ghost. I want that power to dwell in me. I want to be like Jesus. I want to be able to lay my hands on the sick. I want to be able to lay my hands on the blind eyes and they open back up. You know what I want to do? I want to be able to speak to a man that's at the gate of beautiful and he get back up. I tell him, what I do have, I give unto thee. Get up and run. See, you don't understand. That Bible is real. I want to be able to step on the seal and say, peace be still. I want to be able to feed a multitude with two fish and five loaves of bread. See, you don't understand. We're getting ready to do the phenomenon. We're getting ready to do the phenomenon. You sit down like you ain't getting ready to do nothing. If you're a child of God, then you'll be excited. This ain't word of bear witness with your spirit because I'm preaching the Holy Ghost. I'm preaching that power. I'm preaching that glory. I'm preaching the Bible. I'm preaching Bible. I'm preaching Bible. See, you got to understand. It's time to get off out of your dead situation. It's trying to. It's time to get back on fire, like you used to be. It's time when people say, "Ooh, that lady right there is so on fire." That man right there, they on fire for the Lord. What happened? What happened to you? What happened? What happened to your fire? What happened? Uh uh-uh, oh, you better go back and ask God, Lord, relight my fire. You know what I come to do on tonight? I come to relight your fire. You think to take an old powder head? Uh uh-uh, uh, oh, you got to understand a cocaine sniffing? Uh uh-uh, uh, you got to understand? You got to, if he can take me and save me out of sin, then what can he do for you? What can he do for your kids? See, you giving up on your kids because you don't understand what God's sending them through. They just hard headed. They don't listen. They in and out of jail. That don't mean nothing. Because if they got a, a calling on their life and they chose it, I can bet. Uh oh, you got to understand. You can bet your bottom dollar that God going to use them. He got a time. He got a season and a time for all things. He get ready to raise them up. They're going to be the very one that's going to come back and bring deliverance to the whole family. You got to understand what God doing in this last hour. He raising up real souls. He's raising up willing people, not people that backbiting and gossiping. He's raising up soldiers. He 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 raising up soldiers. I tell every day. I tell God every day, Lord, don't let a spirit of religion come up on me. Don't let me just go through the motion. Don't let me just be sitting up in the house. And because I done been in here for a while. Man, I'm talking about sitting right up in the pool pit on my way to hell. I'm talking about sitting right up in the pool pit and jealousy will come up in your heart. You will see a sister or brother get up and all of a sudden you just get angry for no reason. Why I'm not being used? Why didn't he use me? And you can be getting used, but look how the enemy is so slick and so sort of. He'll make you think you ain't doing nothing. He want to put something in your heart because he know God resists the proud, but he give grace to the humble. He going to resist anybody that got something in their heart. If you get found with something in your heart, you can be sitting inside the house, but you'll be cast out of the kingdom. Do you understand what I'm saying to you, you can be sitting in the house, but you uh-uh, watch this now, he told Satan, he said, I'm going to cast you out, but he said, I, he ain't tell him he never want to go use him no more, that's right, <laughs> he didn't say I ain't going to use you no more, he just didn't use him for good no more, but he still used him, see, uh-uh, it's a sad thing, when you get cast out of the kingdom and you think you still getting used, but you ain't getting used for good no more, now you getting used for something else. Oh no, I was telling God when he showed me that every day I'm watching myself. I'm watching myself so closely. If I talk, if I say something to my wife the wrong way, I'm going in the room, Lord, help me. Don't let no iniquity get in my heart. I say something to my kids because he want to put, see, Satan will put so much frustration in you for your kids and you won't even know it. All he want to do is open the door with anybody. So what he going to do, he going to use that thing closest to you to be able to get to you and so to, so to be able to open that door to anger they can be able to open a door to frustration they can be able to open a door to bitterness I'm sitting right in the house I'm talking about I'm forming bitterness in my heart for my wife right up 
up in our house. Look how many people sitting right up in our house and forming bitterness in their heart, unforgiveness in their heart. I'm talking about being shaped, letting the devil shape you right in the house, but you ain't letting the devil shape you no more. I declare on today, I rebuke Satan every trial, every tribulation that he's been trying to come up against you with, that you gonna overcome it, and you gonna have the victory on tonight. We ain't just let the enemy ride our back. We ain't just let the enemy take us out. We ain't just let the enemy take us down at will. You ain't just taking me down. You know why? Because I'm going to praise my way through. The Bible says he inhabits the praises of his saints. See, if you're a real soldier, then you will be like the tribe of Judah. You will be on your feet giving God praise. You will be on your feet telling God, Lord, no matter what you send me through, no matter what the trial is, no matter what the tribulation is, Lord, if I ain't got no money to pay no bill, then I'm going to still go, Lord. Lord, whatever it takes, Lord, please use me, Lord. Don't cast me out of the kingdom and use me for evil. Lord, don't cast me out of the kingdom. Lord, and use me for evil. Lord, I want to be right on tonight. Lord, I want your power, Lord. Lord, I want your glory, Lord. Lord, I want your anointing, Lord. Lord, I want that glory. I want that power. I want that glory. I want that power. I want that glory. I want that glory. I want that power. Yes, Jesus. I want that glory. Yes, I want that power. Yes. I want that glory. I want that power. See, ain't nobody real no more. You go in the house, you see somebody acting one way. Then you leave at the house, they acting another way. When we gonna be all the way real? When we gonna be sweet inside the house and outside the house? You got some people that's sweet. I mean, that's mean inside the church. But when they leave the church, they nice. What type of stuff is that? How you gonna be mean to the saints? And you call yourself a saint. You call yourself a saint. No. I want to feel your love. I want to be able to see your love. Because you know what your love come with? Your love come with a spirit. Your love come with a spirit. You can see the spirit of love. You can see the spirit of compassion. You can see it on them. You can see it on them. You can see it on them. What I want to do tonight, I'm talking about is light your fire again to let you know that the enemy ain't did nothing. You can ready to get double for your trouble. If you can hold on and don't give up. Jesus. If you can hold on and don't get up, I'm almost out your way. If you can hold on and don't get up, God get ready to bless you like you ain't never seen. See me, I don't worry about nothing. All I want to do is obey God. Whoever get it, they get it. Whoever don't want it, they don't get it. The Bible says, my sheep know my voice. And the stranger, they will not follow. You ain't gonna stranger. You ain't gonna follow no stranger. This word I'm speaking right now, this ain't no stranger because every word that I say said is coming out the Bible. It's coming out of this word because you know why? I want to be so full of the word. I want to be so full of the words I overflow. I want to be so full of the words I overflow. You know how many you know how many demons I had to fight on a regular basis? You know what God getting ready to do to us? He getting ready to fortify us. He said a, a wise man is strong and he that has knowledge increases in strength. I'm talking about uh, uh, see if you know your God and you're going to be strong and you're going to do exploits. So you don't understand. He says you think in the day of adversity is because your screen is small. You better get your screen up. But the Bible says you can do all things through Christ with strength in you. Get that Holy Ghost. Get that anointing. That same anointing that raised Jesus Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal body. What is that anointing? That same anointing. My God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost. I'm getting ready to get that Holy Ghost. I'm getting ready to get that in the beginning God. I'm getting ready to get God. I'm getting ready to get God in the fullness thereof. See, I want everything. I want everything. I want that Genesis 1 and 26. I want that power. I want that dominion. I want to be able to walk on Satan's head and tell him, Satan, you don't run nothing. I want to be able to look at him and speak to him and tell him, get thee behind me. You don't run me. When you come to my mind, I want to be able to tell you, get thee behind me. You don't run me. When he come to my kids, I want to be able to say, get thee off of my kids. Get behind them. Satan, you don't want nothing. Uh -uh, you believe in one God. If you do, you do well. The devil to believe in their trouble. How many devils trouble at your presence? You know why? They get ready after tonight to tremble at your presence. The enemy ain't getting ready to stop nobody up in this place. He can't do nothing because we're going to stay in that world. We're going to fight with that world. We're going to overcome evil with good. We're going to go to evil. We're going to bless and curse now. Somebody in this place on tonight, they feel that joy. Somebody in this place on tonight, they feel that conviction. If you got that conviction, then shout glory. That's it, that's it, that's it. 
I ain't never seen you a day in my life, but I'm gonna tap you on your on your chest three times, and God gonna give you a supernatural miracle. Let you no more shady eater. Come stand right here. You in need of a miracle. God getting ready to give it to you. I might not never see you another day in my life. But God said the hell you. You chosen to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. You got to understand God getting ready to raise you up in this last hour. I see pains that shoot across your chest. But God said, don't worry about that. I'm getting ready to give you a healing on tonight. I don't know what's going on with this little prostrate thing. But God said, don't worry about that. Them little pains that you get down there, God will heal all that. Now watch what God getting ready to do for you. I see like a little piece of something that you need. I don't know if you own something. I don't know if you got a business. I don't know if you do some little construction or something that you do, some type of work. But God finna get ready to give you this piece of equipment that you need. God get ready to open up the door and give it to you. God get ready to do it for you. Watch what I tell you. Not too many days here. You just stay steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in the works of the Lord. Hell Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. See, you got to understand. God is getting ready to do it. God getting ready to do it for a sign. I don't know what you did to one of them knees, but that thing gets so still sometimes, like you can't hardly move. God said that's just a sign to let you know He getting ready to move for you. Go in peace. God getting ready to move for us. I'm talking about prophecy. It's gonna be on precise. It's gonna be precise. I'm talking about it's gonna be right on God getting ready to move for us. Ready to take us to another level. That's why I ain't sitting around worrying. Don't nobody else want to be in the world. If don't nobody else love the world. Don't nobody else want the world. You know what I want? I want this word and give me even more. I want even more of the Holy Ghost. Give it all in me. Give it in me. Give it in me. Every day I tell him, don't nobody else want to pray. Lord, allow me to pray. If don't nobody else want to seek your face, allow me to seek your face. Lord, I tell him every day. Lord, Jesus. Jesus. I, love Jesus. I tell him every day, don't let me be like no other preacher, no other prophet on the face of this earth. Let me be what you want me to be, whatever your will is for my life. That's what it is. You know why? Because I want to be a Jesus man. I want a Jesus anointing. I want a Jesus power. I want a Jesus glory. See, we want to be like everybody else besides Jesus. But me, I want to be like Jesus. I want to be like Jesus. I want that power. I want that wonder working power. I want that wonder working power. I want that wonder working power. 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 Jesus. Jesus. Yes. Yes, Jesus. I want that power. Yes, Lord. I want that power. Yes. I want that power. Yes. I want that power. Yes. God gonna go all the way down your back through one of your legs. And he's gonna give you a milk all tonight. So you don't understand. God getting ready to send the fullness of his word on tonight. God getting ready to send healing. If you can open up your heart. Jesus. If you can open up your heart, yes. see all you gotta do is close your eyes and ask God to show you is he real? Is he real? Is he real? Or is he playing? If you got a spirit of discernment, then you won't be able to miss. You can tell the real from the fake. You can tell the real from the fake. You can tell the real from the fake. But the real come with something. The real come with a present. The real, the real come with something. The real come with something. They come with that power. They come with that anointing. They come with something in the palm of their hands that they'll be able to lay their hands on the sick and they got to recover. I'm talking about they can lay their hands on a blind eye and they can come over in the natural and the spiritual. You don't understand what God can really do for us. I'm asking God every day keep me in that secret place. Keep me in the 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 secret place. Lord, keep me in the secret place. Keep me in the secret place. Keep me in the secret place. I got to dwell under the shadow of the Almighty. Lord, when you come, you say you come with healing in your wings. Somebody needs healing, not only in their body, but in their mind. Somebody been fighting depression up in this place. I'm talking about even a suicide spirit. Been upon somebody's mind for after today. I rebuke that suicide spirit. I rebuke that depression. 
I rebuke that heartache. I rebuke that pain. I speak life into your life, oh, tonight. I speak joy like you ain't never seen. The hand of the Lord, that God is upon you. Don't worry about nothing. Don't worry about that little trial that you just went through about a week and a half ago. I'm talking about seeing you get so angry. I'm talking about seeing you get so mad. But God said, don't worry about it. He said, daughter, I was with you. And I'm with you in the fire. So you don't understand who God is. God loves you so much. The vision and them dreams that you be having, they ain't for no reason. God's going to get ready to use you. Get ready to use you. God get ready to use you. Yeah, it seems like you might make a couple of mistakes, but he said, count it all joy when you fall in the diver's temptation. Don't worry about what you did. Don't worry about what you said. Don't worry about where you went to. God get ready to move for you like you ain't never seen. I don't know where you at in employment. I don't I ain't just trying to prophesy no money, but something's going to get ready. God get ready to open up the door for you. God get ready, the door get ready to open for you like you ain't never seen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory, Jesus. 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 Receive it in Jesus' name. Receive it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, Jesus. That God gonna go all the way back in the, name of Jesus. In the roll of decks of your life. In the name of Jesus. Well, I'm the age five or six. Well, I'm not Maybe seven. Well, I'm in here to be Utah. Well, I'm about to be out of here to be Utah. God gonna take this hurt up out of you. Well, I'm in here to be out of here to be Utah. Glory to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. When I remove my hand tonight, I'm taking this with me. I ain't trying to tell you you ain't you ain't got you ain't worth it. Maybe you ain't you ain't nobody. You ain't Jesus. Your word, your word, Jesus. Your word is true. Jesus. Hallelujah. Your word is true. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Just receive. Receive it, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory, Jesus. Just a little noise. Glory, Jesus. The preacher just go on, sit down, get a glass of water. I want to be able to bring deliverance. Somebody prophesy. And told me this, and you're going to have a chance to be. You're going to take two 18 willers to get it where they got to go. God spoke to me, he said, son, he said, they're going to be willing to cast this up under your tents. He said, you getting ready to see the dead body raised. He said, you're going to see the blind eyes. He said, you're getting ready to see it. See, you got to understand. We're getting ready to see the phenomenon. No. We're getting ready to see God. Some stuff like you ain't never seen in this generation. If you believe what I'm saying to you on tonight, if you believe God, will jump in your feet. Just let me you give God the loud and hallelujah. The loud and
I believe I believe it because I've seen it now. I believe it because I've seen it now. I believe I believe it because I've seen it now. I believe, I believe it because I've Come on, just just walk a little bit. Just walk a little bit. Come on, walk up to you. You heal now. You heal now. You believe it. You only believe that. Come on, walk. That's it. That's it.
Somebody told him to be like Jesus. I can't remember what. But I really went to church on a Friday night. <laughs> okay, it's your song. And I heard him preaching, and he said, you can be like Jesus. Uh-huh. I've never heard nobody say you can be like Jesus. Yeah. And when he said you can be like Jesus, that first spark, I was sitting in the back holding my hands up like this. All of a sudden, I felt somebody rub their hands up my hand. I heard a voice speak from him and say, wow, you can be like that. He said, wow. Mm-hmm. The next morning, I was up riding around the city looking for the church. Mm-hmm. I was riding around everywhere. I walked up in the, finally found the church, walked up in noonday. And when I walked this up, blew me back. Mm-hmm. He talked, actually, it was the spirit of prayer. Because yeah. I didn't ever know people prayed in church like that. <laughs> yeah, so nobody does. Me, I was looking, they were crying, crying. I'm like, what's wrong with them? Mm-hmm. And I was sitting there, had these things on their head. I'm like, why can't these things on their head? <laughs> yeah. I was in the back. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and that's how God let Apostle McCoy be there all the time. Because that's how God had. Yeah. He used to sit in the back. Yeah. And I ain't know how to pray. And I'd be on the seat, other side, he'd be praying. I'd just be saying everything he said. No. Yeah, that's how to do it. That's how I learned how to pray. That's how you do it. That's how I learned how to pray. And yeah. to this day, right now, I still be saying, he'd be praying. I'd be praying. Mm. Uh, because <laughs> you can't walk with him. Yeah. If you don't agree with your leader, how you gonna walk with him? Mm-hmm. If you ain't a real soldier, how you gonna walk with him? So man, don't you know we about to get persecuted, but the power of God and the anointing on our life, I'm telling the devil going to look at us and we're going to do something do nothing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory, Jesus. He's going to jump in your body, but he's going to bag back. That's what he's going to know. I can't yes, hallelujah, Jesus. All that time they called Jesus. me crazy, all that time they Jesus. told me, I gave him a job, I left college, I left college, God opened up the door for college, I'm talking about a, 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 a degree to get in there, food, everything paid for. God spoke to me one day in class. He said, leave, and I'm going to bless you. Boy, everybody said I was crazy. <laughs> that ain't God. God ain't telling you to leave no school. God ain't going to never tell you like that. God, God is my God. going to bless you. Because they think money. Yeah, uh-huh. bless you. Yeah. I didn't know I'm going to be so much pain, so much pain, so much. I ain't know what, what to do. I cried for like an hour that day, sitting up under my garage crying all of a sudden. The car behind me filled up with smoke, a glory in the car. Yeah. And the figure was standing in the, in, the, in the back of the car and comforted me. I was speaking in tongues like an owl. God, all this stuff was new to me. Then a couple months later, an angel came to me in my dream. He just reached his hand out and touched it. And my hand reached out. He touched me in the palm of my hand. I never had that in my life. I ain't never been the same no, since. To change a man that was messed up. When, when, when they see me now, it's like they can't believe me. Because it's a, it's a, man, if you seen some of my pictures, when, when I, like, I was like this. My wife, I came back from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. That's why I got hooked on the heroin and stuff. Came back, because that's all they do is heroin up there by New York and stuff. Mm. And came back through the door. I was happy to come back to the door. I ain't seen my wife. Oh, she opened the door. I ran running to the back room. Mm-hmm. Jesus. Oh, and she was screaming, ah, that ain't my husband. That ain't. Oh. I'm like, what's wrong with me? Mm-hmm. Not even knowing I had got so skinny. Mm-hmm. She oh. took off running. I was looking at him. I said, say, do you see that, sir? I did not even know. That's how much redeemed it took over my body, my mind. Mm-hmm. I couldn't even see it. Mm-hmm. I thought I was ready. I thought it was regular. Cut four, five, six holes in your belt back and twist it all the way back. Jesus. Like Jesus. Jesus. I just messed up. Yes, Jesus. But God can deliver me. Yes, hallelujah. God can deliver. Just imagine what He get ready to do to your kids. Yes, yes. Imagine what He get ready to do to your husband. Yes, yes. Jesus. Just imagine coming in the house going to hell. It all shit. Then nobody believe shit. my wife was saying. Time she coming out for us in August, and I see her. Jesus. No man, I'm jumping on the bus ride. Everywhere. Jesus. Every service, I'm at noonday. Mm. I'm at Tuesday, Wednesday, mm. Thursday. Break Saturday. Two service Sunday. I still do the same thing to this day. Hallelujah. Because I gotta understand Damn. the first day that you quit or you slack up, that's when the enemy coming in. Because yeah. he don't know if he'll ever get another opportunity yeah. to take you out. Yes. You can't I don't care if you so sleep, your eyes won't get open. The other day God said, son, just go sit in the chair. He said, don't worry about that. He said, I know if you're tired, I already know. I know everything. He said, all I want you to do is get up and just keep coming.
coming in here. Mm -hmm. And after you come in here, I give you strength to be able to do what you got to do. Mm -hmm. I'm going to let you all sleep in your skin. Mm -hmm. You just be in prayer. But keep going because the day you miss it, just, just think about the day you miss the prayer. That's like the first day, day you have. Jesus. Like everything's just going crazy. That's what, what's going as soon as you miss prayer, your day, day just goes But everybody, you smile, you wake up, and you energize, you have a good deal. You have a little whatever you're doing. You just go on about your day. If you love, but miss that day of prayer. And you will see, you know it in your head. Man. You be trying to get a little prayer on the side. Like, yeah. 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 But it just ain't yeah. the same. Yeah. Just sit down. Yeah. Get that cry. And just be able to cry for the for the for the for the for the <laughs> Yes, Jesus. It ain't nothing like that. Yes, Jesus. Cry those tears down as well. Jesus. But we're going to get ready to come forth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Uh, the, uh, Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, put your hands together for uh, Jesus. Uh,
I said, I believe God going to take care of me. I said, I believe I ain't. Thank you everybody. I'll be telling me everywhere I go. I said, don't quit your job. Everybody ain't for him. Nah, that's right. I just had so much faith. I just knew God was going to take care of me. I said, ain't no way you just brought me out of this for me to go work at the shipyard. But I ain't a shipyard worker. <laughs> Okay. I can't get out of, uh, do that. Be breaking my back. <laughs> oh, well, and that, 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 I just can't do that. That's right. But God knew. So God knew what I needed. He knew where it was gonna take for, for me. Amen. He knew, Amen. He knew that I was. I believe I was born to be a preacher. Yes, you are. Yes. Hallelujah. But I thank God on today. Yes. I thank God for you. Come on, put your hands yes. together for me. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you. I ain't gonna run you. Also, we can do that out of religion. Mm -hmm. We can do that out of mm -hmm. just going through the motions. Yeah. Yes. But just close your eyes. Mm -hmm. And we're just going to pray to God for a couple of minutes. Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I'm Jesus. Lord, we thank you for that word that came forth. Yes, Jesus. Lord, we thank you for your anointing, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Come me from your heart on tonight. Tell God to restore the zeal, restore the joy, to restore the hunger in your soul on tonight. Lord, we thank you tonight, Lord, for your word, Lord, that came forth on tonight, Lord. Lord, you put this word in my heart, Lord. I hope it rejuvenizes somebody, Lord, that want to keep going, Lord, to get a hunger and thirst for you, Jesus. Lord, it's somebody, Lord, that asks it, Lord, for you to restore the fire again in their soul, Lord. Lord, we ask you to forgive us for every sin, known or unknown, seen or unseen, Jesus. Lord, we ask that you cleanse us from every hidden iniquity, Lord, every secret sin, Lord. Every hidden iniquity, Lord. Get it out of us, Lord. The stuff that we don't know that's in us, Lord. Lord, remove it on tonight, Jesus, Lord. Lord, don't leave us the same way that we came up in this place on tonight, Lord. Lord, we got people connected to us, Lord. We got kids and loved ones, Lord. Husbands and wives, Lord. Grandbabies, Lord. Let us walk up right to the fullest, Lord. Lord, give us the spirit of prayer, Lord, and supplication, Lord. Give us the spirit of obedience, Lord. We obey you, Lord. Down to the smallest, minute detail, Jesus. Lord, please, Lord, come on, somebody. Yes. Cry out to God on tonight. God is in the business of restoring on tonight. You can get your joy. You can get your peace back. You can get your hunger back. You don't have to worry about nobody prophesying to you. God want to prophesy to you right now. Cry out to God and ask the Lord, whatever you do, Lord. Lord, don't leave me the same way that I came up in this place, Lord. Lord, please, Lord, hide, hide in deeper depths in you, Lord. Lord, please, Lord, we got to go higher, Lord. We want a greater anointing, Lord, a greater glory, Lord. Lord, we want greater love, love in our hearts, Lord, to be able to overcome evil, Lord. To be able to run, run the good for evil, Jesus, Lord. Lord, we ask that you refill us with the Holy Ghost on tonight, Lord. Lord, let this word go with us, Lord. Let it jump in the showers with us, Lord, in the cars with us, Lord, in the bed with us, Lord. Please, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Lord, we got to have your Holy Ghost in this hour, Lord. Lord, fill us with the Holy Ghost tonight, Jesus, Lord. Give us a refilling of the Holy Ghost, Jesus. Lord, we thank you tonight, Lord. Lord, we thank you for your tender mercies, Lord, your outstretched hands, Lord. Lord, restore the cry that's in our heart, Lord. Please, Lord, whatever you do, Lord. Lord, don't leave us like this, Lord. Please, Lord, help us on tonight, Jesus. Lord, we thank you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Lord, we magnify your holy name on today, Jesus. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for everything that you've done, everything that you're going to do, Lord. Lord, you put this short word in my heart, Lord. You told me to minister to the people, Lord. Lord, move like never before, Lord. You said one water, one plant. One plant, one water, you give the increase, Lord. Jesus. Give the increase in the name of the name Jesus, Lord. Jesus. Lord, we thank you, Son, Jesus, and we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, put those hands together for Jesus. Come on.